Hello and happy Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm going to take you through this case. It's another kind of a typical case, an easy one. Uh, this is a good case to show anatomy. You can see this is a, your typical large field of view for a cone beam CT where you don't see the full skull. But you do see up you know, into the frontal sinus and you see a large part of the skull base and a lot of different things, a lot of different parts of anatomy you can see in this field of view outside of just the dentition and the immediately surrounding bone. So we'll look through this. You'll notice something right away and then we'll talk a little bit about anatomy. All right, so now we're in the multiplanar reformat. And I'll just take you through, you can look at it and you should notice right away something that really stands out. Even if you're not that familiar with cone beam CT, look at the two sides and see where it's not symmetrical. See that here in the maxillary sinus? One side is nice and pretty open. There's still a little bit of sinus membrane thickening right here, and that's pretty normal. But this side, that's a lot more thickening than what would be considered normal. And so you look, you want to make sure the drainage pathways of the sinuses are clear. We scroll through here to where maxillary sinus ostium is and it's obviously congested you see that congestion even goes into the nasal cavity and up into the ethmoid sinus or the ethmoid air cells so all this area is just kind of congested here around the middle turbinate this is someone who would probably benefit from surgery an ENT would go perform a surgery and open this area up uh, of course, that would be a second line of treatment. The first line of treatment would be antibiotics, but this patient has had these sinus issues for quite some time and been on long-term antibiotics and still never cleared up. But not much going on in the teeth. The teeth and dental alveolar bone appear pretty normal. So let's just look at some anatomical structures. And I like looking in the axial plane. A lot of different things you can see, especially for these that get the entire skull base. So you can look at back here and see the external auditory canal. You make sure that's clear and patent. Sometimes you can see earwax in there, but looks like she keeps her ears pretty clean. You follow that up and then you can see the ossicles, as tiny as they are. You can see in cone beam CTs, and this is even a not very high resolution cone beam CT. This is only 0.3 voxel size. But you can see the ossicles fairly well. And they look pretty normal if you want a little pointer. And the axial view, at some point it'll look like a little ice cream cone. And that's two of the, os the bones of the ossicle. The bone on the bottom that makes the cone is the incus. The bone on the top that makes the little ball of ice cream is the malleus. And the stapes is a little tiny bone that maybe you can barely see part of there. But it's usually pretty hard to see in a cone beam CT. So where does that lead us? Leads us into the cochlea, which is right here. You want to make sure that looks normal. And following in from the cochlea is the internal acoustic canal or internal auditory canal. That's where the vestibular cochlear and the facial nerve travel. And then posterior to the cochlea, you see these little tubes that kind of wrap around. And those are the semicircular canals. And this little opening here that joins the cochlea and the semicircular canals is, is the vestibule. So you can see the same structures on this side, the cochlea, vestibule, semicircular canals here. This should be even easier, but what, are, what is this black area here? Of course, we know that black means that it's air. And those are the mastoid air cells. And 
then it should be pretty apparent when you see the condyles. Sometimes these mastoid air cells will extend pretty far anteriorly. Sometimes even into the into the bones surrounding the TMJs, into the articular eminence. But that's pretty atypical. So what is this? If you have a question about something, what something is, you can follow it up and see that extends as you're going superiorly, superiorly toward the medial. So you should be able to recognize that. That's the internal carotid canal. Carotid artery comes up more lateral and then it heads medial as it goes through the petrous portion of the temporal bone. Now, I want you to look for the foramen ovale and foramen spinosum. You can see them on both sides. There's I'm scrolling back and forth. So when you look to look for those, you look for something that looks like a high heel footprint. And the, the toe of the footprint is going to be the foramen ovale. The heel is going to be the foramen spinosum. On this side, they're not really in the same axial plane, and that's fine. Just make sure they're there, and they're patent, and everything looks normal. So what else do we see here? I mentioned the maxillary sinuses. This right one is filled with inflamed mucosa. And here we have the middle turbinates. What are these two big holes that we see? Up in kind of the anterior lateral portion of the nasal cavity. As I follow those up and down, you should be able to tell. This is the nasal lacrimal ducts. And these open up into the inferior meatus. So they drain here, inferior to the inferior turbinates and that's the only thing that drains into the inferior meatus and it's pretty obvious it stands out as you scroll up and down axially so maxillary sinuses and what's this posterior to the maxillary sinus the pterygopalatine fossa As you probably know, these are the lateral and the medial pterygoid plates. The nasal septum, which is made up of what bones? There are actually four bones that contribute to the nasal septum. The most inferior ones are just a spinous part of the maxilla and also the palatine bone. So the palatine bone just connects to the maxilla posteriorly here. In the, so the posterior part of the hard palate is the palatine bone. And the spine of both of those just contributes a small part of the nasal septum. And then you have the vomer. And superiorly, you have the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. And then towards the middle of the axial plane, a lot of this is just cartilaginous tissue that makes up a good chunk of the nasal septum. So I mentioned the maxillary sinuses, the ethmoid air cells, but then which sinus is this? Most More posterior to the ethmoid air cells. Of course it's the sphenoid sinus. And it's common to see septae like this, just little plates of bone through any of the sinuses. And with the sphenoid sinus, a lot of times you'll see what they call here the lateral recess. The sphenoid sinus can be pneumatized inferiorly and laterally to the body of the, the rest of the sphenoid sinus. It can even, it can even extend down into the pterygoid processes 
which is the part that joins the two pterygoid plates. Let's look at a coronal view real quick. Well, I haven't mentioned yet the frontal sinus, which is here superior to the ethmoid air cells. You can see this drainage pathway really clear. So on her, the foramen rotundum are not very obvious, but they're there. And you look for the foramen rotundum that be lateral to the sphenoid sinuses. And you may see these little foramen that you'll want to call foramen rotundum, but they're not. Those, those are the vidian or pterygoid canals. The way I tell the difference is those, first of all, they're more inferior, but they also seem to open up right in the center of the pterygopalatine fossa, kind of right in the area of the, the pterygoid processes. Whereas the foramen rotundum open up kind of superior and lateral to what I envision as kind of a central part of the pterygopalatine fossa. So I'm obviously not going to go over every possible anatomical structure in this short little five minute video. This is just a little introduction. I'm in the process of creating a more comprehensive course on cone beam interpretation. So stay tuned for that and let me know if you're interested.